some time ago, I got around to reading Dr. Warren Farrell's The Myth of Male Power, and in it, he pointed out that one reason men are more likely to develop heart disease may have to do with criticism actually eliciting an adverse state in the heart where an abnormal pulsation may occur. More specifically, regarding severity, he states, Abnormalities as great as those produced by riding a stationary bicycle to the point of either exhaustion or chest pain. Now, this is not at all to say that men should not be exposed to genuine and constructive criticism. However, women engage in a malicious form of criticizing, disrespecting, and psychologically abusing those they choose to be in a relationship with, which is not only sadistic, but aims to hurt them in order to gain leverage, amongst other things. This is what first got me thinking about the inherently detrimental state of many relationships, and today is at least being acknowledged to some extent. Karen from the Happy Wife School channel, although stating that it is of course up to the individual man to stay or leave a wife who behaves in this manner, has asserted that men should get to the point wherein women's abuse, as she phrased it, emasculating tendencies, bounces off and doesn't affect them. In my eyes, the men who stick around for such treatment by narcissistic women harbor psychology that is perhaps indicative of two things. One, a literal addiction to women, which is in line with Frank Tallis' book, Love Sick, Love as a Mental Illness, and is likely somewhat akin to that of sugar or any other drug. You may be able to imagine the diabetic who knows a doctor told them that they may have to take a toe or two if they keep consuming sugar, and yet they do it anyways. They know on some level that their current way of living is destroying them, but part of them just can't let go. She has also talked about the fact that many women literally had no interest in the man to begin with, but settle for them, and are now abusive as well as cutting off sex from them. By extension of their addiction, these men, if they do internalize this reality about their wives, it furthermore goes to show the strength of this addiction, and perhaps even parallels what they were exposed to in childhood. On top of this, as is the point of this video, the dark tried environment these women establish by perpetually prodding the husband into submission through abuse is, I think, likely contributing to these men passing earlier. As many of you are already aware, a 2014 article titled Domestic Violence Against Men, Women More Likely to Be Intimate Terrorists with Controlling Behavior and Relationships, also sheds light on this behavior being common in women, and furthermore supports my hypothesis as it's not specifically focusing on Machiavellian or even dark triad women, but women in general. As the author Lizette Borelli states, women were more likely to be verbally and physically aggressive to their partners than men. Additionally, there was a higher prevalence of controlling behaviors seen in women than men, which was found to significantly predict physical aggression in both sexes. In other words, the more controlling behavior a woman displayed, the more likely she would be an intimate terrorist or physically aggressive to her partner. Heart disease is the leading cause of passing worldwide, according to one 2021 study, and men are significantly more likely to succumb to this than women by 50%. Now, while there are multiple proposed reasons for this being the case, such as hormones, I do find it reasonable to propose that women play a significant role in all of this. As Harvard Medical School explains, over time, repeated activation of the stress response takes a toll on the body. Research suggests that chronic stress contributes to high blood pressure, promotes the formation of artery-clogging deposits, and causes brain changes that may contribute to anxiety, depression, and addiction. Looking at the rates of heart disease amongst 4,300 people in relation to being exposed to violence in relationships, the following was found. 30% increase in rates of passing, which increased to 34%, where there were multiple incidents, and a 34% increase in rates of heart disease. Women's sadistic and abusive behaviors they unleash when they have the man cornered, perhaps in a marriage, undoubtedly elicit such a life-threatening response as it is a chronic form of stress for the man on top of any other sources such as work. But how is psychological abuse defined? Well, looking at one study, it sums things up rather well. The systemic destruction of a person's self-esteem and or sense of safety, often occurring in relationships where there are differences in power and control. It includes threats of harm or abandonment, humiliation, deprivation of contact, isolation, and other psychologically abusive tactics and behaviors. 
A variety of terms are used interchangeably with psychological abuse, including emotional abuse, verbal abuse, mental cruelty, intimate terrorism, and psychological aggression. Psychological abuse has myriad effects on the target, and in line with women's perpetual viewing of the relationships with men through a power dynamic lens, if successful, does have the end effect of gaining control over them. There is a rather extensive list of behaviors that fall under psychological abuse, and I'll provide some of them here. 1. Continuously finding fault with the other person or making the person feel nothing he or she does is ever right. 2. Setting unrealistic standards. 3. Diminishing the identity, dignity, and self-worth of the person. 4. Implying something is wrong with the person who has hurt feelings or complains about not liking his or her treatment as a result of the abuse. 5. Suggesting that nobody else would be upset by the same treatment. 6. Training him or her to serve the abuser's interests. 7. Claiming the behavior was meant as a joke. 8. Using a person for advantage or profit. 9. Gaslighting or attempting to make you question your own sanity. 10. Punishing you for not going along with what they want. 11. Humiliating or intentionally embarrassing a partner. 12. Blaming their abusive behavior on their partner. And 13. Serially cheating on a partner and then blaming them for the behavior. Interestingly, some of these are behaviors commonly expected of women, even accepted in relationships, and unsurprisingly, men will respond in various ways to this. In the short term, perhaps isolating oneself, as many men are electing to do, and in the long term, apathy, but perhaps even the onset of a mental health condition can occur. One article looking at the effects of psychological abuse on the brain further solidify just how detrimental many women inherently are to men in stating that emotional abuse is linked to thinning of certain areas of the brain that help you manage emotions and be self-aware. By this, it would seem that women's incessant prodding over time leads to literal deterioration of the brain when the man becomes more emotionally reactive, essentially a more feminine state. Not only this, but getting back to women's use of abuse to gain leverage in the power dynamic it's not uncommon for the abused to actually become clingy and even codependent wherein they accept not having boundaries as well as needs. Unsurprisingly, the majority of research has focused on the abuse of women. However, one study looking at abused husbands did find that the wife's motivation was to gain control and exercise power. With psychological abuse not leaving physical marks and men responding with behaviors such as substance abuse, it can be all the more difficult to pinpoint. The dark tetrad, again, narcissism, Machiavellianism, psychopathy, and sadism, will surely play a role in all of this, and as was brought up in the previous video, as well as paralleling the list of psychological abuse tactics, sadists are known to act as though the abuse is a problem when they don't want to deal with their antisocial acts, or may even state that it was just a joke. This is furthermore in line with the approach to psychopathy term dissocial personality disorder, where implausible rationalizations for one's behaviors are used and brings to mind two things. One, women's assertion that since men treated women badly in the past, that this justifies their abusive behaviors today. And two, the exploitation of terms such as hate, as well as misogyny, when called out for being abusive. In the case of the former, it's generally not that they themselves have been treated badly, but there is a desire to essentially gain victim status by group association, to the women they've likely never met. Such a tactic will be met with notions such as, two wrongs don't make a right. However, at the heart of all of this is likely a sadistic core that is actually indifferent to what women of the past endured. As for the latter, men and women tend to use language rather differently. And one common example of this goes as follows. A man acknowledges some negative behavior he has observed women engage in. In response to this, the woman states that he hates women. Now, what does this assertion actually mean, and what can we learn from it? Well, we can look at this from a literal standpoint, meaning that the woman actually means the words she is saying, as well as a manipulation standpoint. Interestingly, if the woman literally means what she is saying, it inherently implies or admits 
that women engage in the behavior, as no attempt is made to disprove this, only that the man harbors a disdain for women, due at least in part to enduring or observing women's negative behavior. If it were not the case that women engage in the behavior, then hating them would make no sense. This is yet another example of women not rebutting, but deflecting, and makes sense when you take the statement literally, but the assertion by the woman is not likely meant in this way. Women commonly use language as a means to an end endeavor in eliciting a certain emotional response, as opposed to the words actually being significant from a literal standpoint. They would literally just say the word blue if it were as emotionally charged as, say, calling a heterosexual man homosexual. By asserting that the man hates women, the goal would be to get the man to redirect his attention to defending himself, despite the fact that his observation on women's behavior was based in reality. It's a reality, however, that doesn't serve women, and so derailing the conversation is implemented. Similarly, as with the response I expect from this video given that, to assert women are of detriment to men, as well as a health hazard, would be viewed as an obstacle to garnering their resources.